assist in patients in getting um, some economic help in terms of paying for their medications. So what do patients need to know? They need to know a lot. Um, I always stress to patients that they know um, what, what it is, what the drug that they are receiving, how they work, the mechanism of action, what is meant by angiogenesis. We talk a lot about targeted therapy versus chemotherapy. And what you are receiving is targeted therapy. We're targeting certain pathways within the tumor cell to stop the growth of the tumor or to stop the growth of new blood vessels, which is really the process of angiogenesis. Patients need to know side effects. They need to know that side effects need to be reported early. Um, it's important that patients discuss elective uh, surgical procedures with their physicians because if you're going to have an elective procedure done, sometimes it's important that you stop these medications a week or two weeks before uh, the actual procedure because of the problems with wound healing and also you don't want to have um, any issues with excessive bleeding from these medications. You, also, you have to know how to store these medications and what time is the best time and the appropriate time for whatever given medication that somebody is on. This uh, slide just talks about some of the patient assistance programs that are helpful to the various pharmaceutical companies um, if necessary. And on this slide, we have some general resources uh, for you, the Kidney Cancer Association, the American Cancer Society, Association of Cancer Online Resources, and, and the list goes on and on. All of these websites uh, provide a, a wealth of information um, for patients and their families about treatment, about the disease, about clinical trials, um, and, and where you need to go. Well, now I'm going to uh, change the kind of the focus of the talk a little bit and start talking about the side effects associated with these medications. And the way that I have approached them tonight is I'm kind of looking at the various side effects as opposed to looking at every single medication and telling what the side effects are. Because as many of you probably already know, there's classification of side effects that so that really kind of fall across many of these um, different medications. And although there are some medications that have you know, a certain side effect profile, I will be addressing those as well. So the skin toxicities. Patients can develop dry, itchy, red skin. Their face, their arms, their legs, their chest from these medications. They may even develop a rash. A rash can uh, look like small little hives. It can be pink and, and little welts on your arms and on your chest, and, can, and it can be quite bothersome. One of the uh, more challenging skin toxicities that we see with many of these medications is the hand-foot syndrome. And this was a side effect that was you know, relatively you know, new to us and, and something that was certainly different than any other medications that we ever um, administered in the past, where your hands, the palms of your hands, and the soles of your feet develop calluses that are really quite painful to the point where you can't walk, and sometimes it's even difficult to hold a pencil, to open up a jar, um, and, and, to, and to button your shirt. Other skin toxicities are uh, changes in your hair, um, thinning. Although you know patients will not completely lose their hair, we definitely see some thin thinning with many of these medications. Change in the color. Uh, we, you lose the pigment in your hair, so your hair becomes gray. Uh, some scalp itching or burning. And sometimes you see what we call subungual hemorrhages and inflammation of the nail beds. And that, is, that looks like really brown little specks underneath your nail that are quite um, harmless and they're, and they're not painful, but those are just some changes that you see um, you know, in your skin when you're on these medications. Here are some pictures of the hand foot. And, that, and this is on the hands. 
management of skin toxicities begins with a very uh, aggressive skin care regimen at the initiation of therapy. And by that I mean lotion minimum three times a day, in the morning, during the day, and at night. Um, and the more you do this at the beginning of treatment, it, it's, it, it may not prevent the hand-foot syndrome from occurring, but it will definitely decrease the intensity and, and make the, those calluses a lot soft so that when you, you won't be having this very tough skin that can really be quite painful. I mentioned the moisturizing products to avoid extremes of temperature, pressure, and friction to hands and feet. Um, sometimes it requires you know, a, a treatment interruption, a week, 10 days, and then you can go back on. And sometimes it may involve changing the dose. Like say perhaps after you have had your treatment interrupted, sometimes you may want to have, um, or, or the doctor will just kind of decrease the dose so that you can continue on the medication and not have the intensity of the, of the skin side effect. We don't have a lot of information on what is the best moisturizer to use or exactly when to use it. What I see in my practice is that many over-the-counter products are very helpful, provided they um, are, don't cause any more skin irritation, so I would avoid products with alcohol and perfumes. But using them frequently seems to be the best um, approach. Some patient education, um, to immerse hands and feet in cool water a couple times a day. Elevate the extremities to avoid swelling. Don't wear rings or tight-fitting shoes. That, that's really important because that friction around the feet is going to make the hand-foot uh, syndrome a lot worse when walking. And then when, you're, when, and when you are very symptomatic from your hands and feet, you just should avoid using um, you know, the garden tools, the house tools, and, and any tasks that really require you squeezing and moving your fingers. And again, it's only for a temporary time until the skin heals, and then you're going to be able to resume your normal activities. Avoid jogging, aerobics, power walking, because those add friction to your feet. And I have many patients that will tell me, oh, I've been on my feet a lot, I walked to the airport, I was walking around the mall, and you know, the next day they feel it, and, and, their, feet, and their feet are um, more um, sore the next day. Avoid contact with hot water or steam. This means you know, doing laundry, dishwashing, and rubber gloves should really be avoided because that really holds in moisture and heat, and that can, and that can be um, very tender to skin that's already exposed. I recommend using soft pads for your sore skin. You could put them in your shoes. Pay attention to signs of infection. I report any changes in your activities of daily living to your physician. And note that when you uh, stop the medication, the lesions heal and disappear, and your hands will, uh, and feet will go back to normal. These are just some products um, that have been um, used by patients. These are all over the counter and are very helpful. Moving on to uh, GI toxicities, what we see in pretty much all of these medications is what we call mucositis, which is a, a painful mouth. There's no other way to describe it. It could be a tongue, it could be you know the inside of both cheeks, your gums, and when you think about the 